Hello and welcome back to The Effect. Uh, we are moving on into the chapter on fixed effects and in fact into a whole sort of section of the book uh, that deals with different kinds of research designs uh, that try to solve a particular problem. Uh, so far we've been talking about uh, different ways in which we can control for variables, right? We're talking about regression, we talk about matching, we talk about drawing causal diagrams that tell us what variables need to be controlled for. Of course there is a big problem with this, uh, which is that it is very, 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 very common, especially in social science settings, but uh, even in other kinds of settings as well, to draw the diagram, have it tell you what you need to control for, uh, and then we can go to set up our regression or matching estimator or whatever it is, and we realize, wait a minute, uh, it's telling us that I have to control for something that I don't actually have data on. And so what do I do about that? Uh, and so there thankfully are a number of different methods that we can use uh, that allow us to still estimate a causal effect even if we cannot measure every single thing that we need to control for. Now granted they all only work in particular settings or particular scenarios uh, so we have to get a little bit lucky and be clever about how we apply these methods but if you can't apply these methods they are good ways of getting causal effects and in fact depending on who you talk to uh, some people might think that they are the only good way of getting causal effects in observational data if you can't run an experiment. So we are in a setting where we need to control for some stuff to close back doors, but we cannot measure and control for everything that we need to measure and control for. So fixed effects is one way of solving that problem. And what it does is it basically takes our causal diagram that we are interested in, and it tries to simplify it into something that we can measure and control for all the stuff on the back doors for. And it uses this key insight. If you have a variable that you need to control for, uh, and you can't measure and control for it, you can't measure, you don't have data on it, but you do have data on a sort of broader category that that variable sits inside of, uh, and that ca broader category explains all the variation in that variable. If you have that, then you can just control for that broader category and it will control for all the stuff inside of it. Uh, so for example, uh, let's say that we have data on individual people. Right, we have individual people and we've measured them uh, over time. So I have the same measurement on you this year and last year and the year before and the year before that. And I have that measure on you and I have this measure on a bunch of different people. This is what's called, by the way, panel data, where I measure individuals over time. Uh, and this could be for individual people, uh, it could be for individual companies or countries or whatever it is, right? Maybe I, you know, I have data on New Zealand this year and New Zealand last year and New Zealand the year before that. Let's say the variable that I need to control for uh, is your birthplace. I'm, whatever treatment I'm interested in, I think there is a backdoor variable uh, where the place where you were born both affects whether you were treated or not and affects your outcome. Uh, now let's say that I don't have data on where you were born. However, I do have data on you. Right? Where you were born is fixed within the category of you. So if I could somehow control for your identity, that would control for all the things that are unique to you and do not change over time. And so uh, what if I just add a control variable for you? That would in effect control for your birthplace, even if I can't measure your birthplace. So this is a way of being able to control for something that I cannot measure, your birthplace, by controlling for a broader category that your birthplace sits within, which is you as an individual. Fixed effects is a research design that says, hey, we are going to add a control for the individual. Uh, and in doing so, we will be controlling for all of the things that are unique to that individual and do not change for that individual over time. We're looking for anything that is constant over time. And so when we control for the individual's identity, we are controlling for all that stuff that is constant over time. Let's say that I'm interested in whether or not having a recent visit from the Chancellor of Germany to your country uh, makes your country do more trade with Germany, all right? Now, there are a bunch of things that will determine how much trade you do uh, with Germany. Uh, and one of those things is, of course, your Chancellor visit, but there's a bunch of other stuff that we might put on a causal diagram. Uh, for example, the geography of your country. If you're closer to Germany, you're likely to do a lot more trade with it. Uh, maybe your history with Germany. If you have a strong history of trading with Germany before, that will probably affect whether the chancellor visits you and then also visit whether you're going to do more trade with them in the future. Uh, it could be the culture of the population. Like if you're a you know German speaking country that's not Germany, they might be more likely to trade with them. Uh, or if you have a lot of similar cultural heritage. Um, and there's also stuff like, you know, your current politics. You know, is your country mad at Germany for some reason uh, or good friends with them? So there is a bunch of stuff here and we might need to close all of these back doors, but we not, might not be able to measure all these things. Like how do you measure the culture of the population? Or how do you put a number on a country's history with Germany, right? Those are tough things to measure. But we might also recognize that some of these things are going to be constant within country over time. So I might look at a variable like the geography of a country and say, you know what? That's not really changing much over time. You know, uh, Austria has had the same geography for at least a number of decades. 
Uh, the history with Germany, I mean, that is an ever-evolving thing, but if you, you know, go back far enough, you know, you, the history that you've had with Germany 100 years ago, that's not changing from year to year. And so I might be able to take some of those things and say, these are just aspects of the country. If I think about, you know, who you are as a country, you are Austria, or you are, uh, you know, the Netherlands, or you are whatever. All those things are going to be constant for that country over time. And so I can take them all and I can sort of pop them all together into a single variable that I can just call country. As I go from one country to another, these different things change. Different countries have different geographies, different countries have different histories with Germany. But if I stick with a single country, there is no variation in those variables left. A single country does not have variation in their geography from year to year, at least not within the time scale that I might have in my data. Now this diagram in which I've taken all those variables and popped them together into a single variable is a lot easier to close the back doors for. If I can just control for what country you are, I close all those other back doors all at once. It uh, doesn't close all the back doors, right? Things like current politics that do change from year to year still would not be closed, and I would need to add a control for that one separately. But fixed effect says, hey, we can get a lot of our work done here by simply controlling for the individual country. Uh, it will close a lot of back doors for us. In particular, what controlling for the individual does is it separates the variation we have in our data into two forms, the between variation and the within variation. Uh, now, this is technically something that is done anytime you add a control variable, but it's particularly important when we think about controlling for individual as we do in fixed effects. Uh, now, what between and within variation are basically the things that I was just talking about. The between variation is variation between individuals. That is the fact that Austria has different geography than England does, right? Uh, so if I go between different individuals, I see variation in things like geography. Uh, within variation are things that change within individual over time. Uh, so for example, the politics of you know Austria's relationship with Germany might change from year to year. Uh, now granted, the politics has both a between and a within component, right? Austria has different uh, relationship with Germany than, than England does, um, but also Austria's politics with Germany change from year to year. So that could have both elements. And the key thing is that when we do fix effects, when we control for individual, we are controlling away all the between variations and only the within variation is left. That is the key of fixed effect. We are saying, hey, we have all these back doors that are between. We have some back doors that are within. By, do, by controlling for individual, we control for all the between variation. It all goes away. We are left only with the within variation. To fix the idea a little bit, let's look at a table of data. Uh, so let's say we are looking at uh, exercise and uh, how much exercise we do, and we're looking at you, and we're looking at me. So here is a table of some data and how much exercise we did uh, on a maybe one to 10 scale in the years of 2019 and 2020. So you uh, got a exercise rating of five in 2019 and an exercise rating of seven in 2020. I, on the other hand, had an exercise rating of four in 2019 and only three in 2020. Uh, so we can do two things. We're gonna ca first calculate how much de exercise did we do on average, uh, both for you and for me. Uh, your average exercise score was six, while mine was 3.5. This isolates the between variation. You got more exercise on average than I did. Uh, the difference between you and me is the difference between your six and my 3.5. On the other hand, we also have the within variation. If we take the amount of exercise that we did in a given year and we subtract out our mean, we do relative to the mean that we have, uh, then we can notice that in 2019, you had one less exercise point than you typically would. On average, you had a six, but this year you had a five, so that is one below. Uh, your typical average. So, uh, and in 2019, you were one above your average. Uh, so the within variation for you is minus one in 2019 and plus one in 2020, because this is relative to your mean, the variation from year to year within you. Similarly for me in 2019, I was half a point above my average. And in 2020, I was half a point below my average. Fixed effect says we are going to get rid of those differences between us. So we're going to take those the difference between 6 and 3.5 and we're going to pop those away. And we are only going to look at the within variation. We're only going to be counting the fact that in 2020, you were exercising more than you typically were. And in 2020, I was exercising less than I typically was. We can look at this graphically as well. Here we have a data set with a number of different years on you and me, both looking at how much exercise we did in a given week and how many times we got a cold in that year. Uh, so if you look at the overall data, you can see that we have a bunch of different years, a bunch of different exercise hours, a bunch of different colds, um, and uh, we also have me and you separately on the graph. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add individual axes for you we're, and, and for me. We're going to sort of imagine that we both have our own sort of home location. I'm going to take the average number of colds per year that you have and the average number of exercise hours per year that you have. 
uh, and we're going to put a set of axes there just for you. We can see that on the bottom left. Now we can see that every point for you is relative to that set of axes. Some years you had more exercise than you typically do. Uh, some years you had less exercise than you typically do. Some years you had more colds per year than you typically do. Some years you had less colds per year than you typically do. Same thing for me. We can put a set of axes on there for me uh, and do the exact same comparison. Everything is relative to my own set of axes. So we can take a point like this one, uh, which is a pretty middling number of exercise hours per week in general, but is a particularly low number of exercise hours per week for you, right? It is a different comparison when we're looking at the overall variation, which includes both between and within, or when we are comparing to your average, uh, which is isolating just the within variation. We can see how this splits up into between and within variation. On uh, in the bottom left here, we can see that if we just look at those axes, if we get rid of all the individual points and just compare the averages of you as versus the averages of me, that is isolating just the between variation. Uh, whereas if we look at the axis and everything relative to one of those individual axes, we are looking just at the within variation. Uh, so you can see that even though in the overall graph, we have sort of an upward slope, uh, if we look at just my data, it looks like there's a vague downward slope there looking just within my data. All right, so that is the concept behind fixed effects. Uh, we can separate our variation in any given variable into just into between variation, which is variation between individuals, and within variation, which is where variation for a given individual over time. Uh, if I control for who the individual is, if I add a control for country, if we're talking about individual countries, or for person, if we're talking about individual people, then that will get rid of all the between variation, leaving just the within variation. If we think we have a bunch of variables on our back doors that are entirely made up of between variation, things like your birthplace that don't change over time, then we will be closing all those back doors, even if it's for stuff that we cannot actually measure. Hopefully that either closes all the back doors uh, and identifies the causal effect for us immediately, uh, or at least it limits the number of things that we need to measure and control for uh, to stuff like the current politics relationship with Germany uh, that hopefully we can measure and control for and therefore close those back doors as well. It makes the job easier. That is how fixed effects works. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about implementation in the next couple of videos. Thank you. <laughs>